Why don't they have windows here? This way it was designed. But why? I, I don't. I don't know. I, I, I can't explain that. Uh, the inmate would be in a cell, and then uh, a food tray would be passed through the cell. If they ever leave the pod, prisoners have to strip naked, pass their hands through a food slot to be handcuffed, then wait for the door to open. Uh, inmates come out to you know get some uh, some exercise. There's more room to run out here. Prisoners only get an hour in this concrete dog run every day. Uh, so right now, uh, the California Department of Corrections is reporting about 2,400 people on hunger strike. Uh, you know, by their criteria, this means that uh, people have refused meals for for nine consecutive meals. They're, but they're, the the numbers of people that aren't eating might might be much higher. At the core of this hunger strike is the issue of indefinite. Uh, de detainment in solitary confinement in the security housing units, or SHU. Uh, the, the way that it works now, an inmate is deemed uh, a gang affiliate uh, and, and placed in the SHU for an indeterminate amount of time. Um, in Pelican Bay Prison, the average amount of time spent there is seven and a half years, uh, but there are around 80 people that have been in, in that prison for 20 years or more, one man who's been in for, for 42 years. But now, Shane, the, the prison authorities' definition of gang seems to be pretty uh, elastic, uh, not having to do with any actual activities uh, or uh, illegal acts of the prisoners within the, the system. Could you talk about how they define these, quote, gangs? Right. So uh, up until about a year ago, um, there, was about, there were seven gangs that qualified for placement, indeterminate placement in the SHU. These are prison gangs. Uh, you know, really dangerous gangs like the Mexican Mafia um, that can, you know, kind of run uh, crime out onto the street. Um, but the criteria for determining whether somebody is, is a, a member or an associate of those games is kind of notoriously uh, loose. Uh, I've seen cases of people who are, who are put in, in the shoe and deemed gang members because they have uh, academic books by the Black Panthers, uh, journal writings about African American history. Um, even the, the materials for, for gang investigators teach that the use of the words tío or hermano, uh, uncle or brother in Spanish, can, can indicate gang activity. So it's a very loose kind of criteria. And somebody, like you said, doesn't actually have to, to do anything to get put in there. Uh, they don't have to, you know, hurt somebody to get an indefinite shoe term. Uh, since the last hunger strike, about a year and a half ago, the Department of Corrections has been has has kind of reformed its policy to where now. Uh, an, an inmate who is considered an associate, not a member, but somebody who kind of associates with one of these gangs, has to actually uh, commit a serious rules violation to get put in the shoe. But at the same time, they've kind of changed the rules for what that means. So uh, in the past, that would mean, you know, an inmate stabbed somebody, tried to escape, something like that. But now a serious rules violation can include, you know, the possession of these books um, or, you know, drawings by an inmate that show gang symbols. So it's kind of the same, the same kind of stuff that has always been used to, to, to put people in, in the shoe indefinitely. Shane Bauer, in your major report for Mother Jones last year, you, also, you examined how hard it is for prisoners who are in solitary confinement due to alleged gang affiliations to appeal for their release into a less restrictive area. This is a clip from the video that accompanied your report when you spoke with officials at Pelican Bay Prison. Much of the evidence brought by gang investigators like Barnaberg comes from informants. It's confidential and can't be refuted. They've got multiple different avenues to review the gang material that's being used against them and challenge it. But Barnaberg says he has never seen a successful appeal in his 15 years at Pelican Bay. When journalists are let into the shoe, the only inmates allowed to talk are those who are informing on fellow prisoners. They don't like me asking why. Could we um, talk to a prisoner who's not uh, going through the process? Um, when we go up to the main line, but within the shoe. No. We just always use these guys right here. Yeah. But why? But we just don't. Good to go. So my guides take me out of the shoe to meet Paul Bocanegra. He was in solitary for 12 years. It is punishment. It's, it's meant to... Uh to break a person. He got out by informing on other prisoners, a process called debriefing, which among prisoners can mean death. You know, you're going to be targeted for assault, possibly murder, so that's always in the back of your head.